All right, lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 and the Kaiser Redux mod as era. The Revolutionary Workers Party, James Gralton, the Kiana C. Last episode, we actually got Gralton into power as well. Uh, yes, we have f uh, fully kitted out our defensive army here under Liam Lynch. I mean, apart from the training them up, giving them better equipment as we produce it and the like, we really won't be doing too much with these... Um, Renan, Kossahe divisions, infantry divisions, because all of the divisions going to the continent will be tank divisions, of course. Yeah, just a 6-2, big brigade, small division. Don't I don't even think I'm going to be bothered with... Uh, be bothered with support artillery. I mean, if we come under attack from, from naval invasions and it looks like we're struggling to hold and we're only barely beating them off, I probably will add in some uh, support artillery just because support artillery is probably the, the best form of firepower in the entire game because it adds a decent bit of soft attack uh, and defense for basically no well literally zero combat with it really adds yeah, an extra 12 guns which is absolutely minuscule but uh, yeah other than that all these will uh, it'll be a quiet war for them i suspect but uh, a quiet war is a uh, is a good war less chances of dying far like far lower chances of dying but they are Yep, they have all their equipment, so we will begin training them up. Uh, they almost have all their equipment. We're still waiting on one more train. I'll just keep one factory on the our Great Southern Railways armor trains. It's just called Great Southern for some reason, but it is Great Southern Railways. Now, end the trade war. Gets event, end of the trade war. Move the threat across the Isle National Spirit. Now that we have signed a treaty ensuring our neutrality and good relations with Britain, the trade war that has waged since 1922 can end. So, funnily enough, I have actually done yet another... Um, done yet another playtest and it, it was extremely odd i mean i'm not gonna let it happen because it, it was such a just an absolute mess so as you can see here the the finns have gone syndicalist what happened was the finns joined the third international russia wanted sala and karelia russia went to war with finland meaning they mean the moscow card was at war with the third international before uh, the moscow card and the third international were at war with the reichs pact and then the war between the Third International and the Reichspack started, and the British and French landed in the Baltics, and they were fighting the Russians and the Reichspact, and everyone was literally fighting each other. Then the Entente arrived. It was just absolutely terrible. I'm going to make sure that does not happen by having the Finns hand over the land. The British and French would basically tell the Finns, hey, we're not going to come to Finland and fight the Russians for you. It's like, you know, we're about to fight the Germans, so you better hand over that territory, goddammit. Yeah, not going to let that happen whatsoever. It's just too crazy. Though to be fair, the Ukrainians did actually flip over to us as well, which I was quite, I was quite happy about, but the Germans were just pushing east. and It uh, looked very, very bad. And uh, I would like th this... Uh, yeah, there we are. There we are. I would like this to actually be a successful run, not a run where we get kicked off of the continent and we spend the rest of the game uh, sitting on our island. I mean, if that happened, I'd, I'd probably wait until the second piece of honor fired and then just, I don't know... If the uh, CSA had w wins out, maybe try and join their faction. Maybe, maybe just try and beat the Entente. Just just to forget about Europe and go to the New World. I don't know. Maybe even try and pick a fight with the British and try and try and form a, a totalist Celtic Union. Something like that. But yeah, I'm not going to let this happen where uh, the Third International gets into a fight with the Moscow card before we've beaten the Reichspact. The only thing that happens after that is another story. Now, how are we doing? Where to go from here? End of the trade war. Since the signing of the first uh, Anglo-Irish Treaty in 1922, it established the Irish Free State within the British Empire. There exists an economic conflict between the UK and Ireland. Tariffs are set at 20% to both imports and exports as a means of hurting the nascent Irish state and as a protectionist measure to aid British businesses. That was reading from the loss of the Weltkrieg. The Irish responded in kind as a means of affirming their independence of Britain. The situation did not change as a result of the 1925 revolution. Um... Uh, and establishment of the Union of Britain in large part due to the ideological differences between the Unionists and Collins Fine Gael. Now, however, with the signing of the Second Anglo-Irish Treaty, the trade war has come to an end and both parties are set to reap the economic benefits. Actually, this, this agreement may just be known as the Anglo-Irish Treaty because the IRA uh, Army Council government completely abrogated, abolished, annulled the, um, the First Anglo-Irish Treaty. So, technically speaking, as we are a continuation of that, government we haven't changed it uh, foundationally 
this might just be the, the just the first Anglo Irish Treaty or just the Anglo Irish Treaty. Now, great, twenty political power, one civilian factory and building slot in Lagan and Ullad. Lovely, or Lahan, yeah, Lahan. Might be Lagan, not too sure. Now, ah, that's so many good options. Yeah, we've done that. That's fine. We've done this. Yeah, we can basically ignore this until we have to join the international. This is a good choice, but so is a lot of this stuff here, and I would like to get other bits too. I think I might go on to Ulster. Now, a browderist Ireland, as as Chairman James Grumman continues to lead Ireland towards its ultimate destiny as a true classless, moneyless, and stateless society. Uh, just how we get to that perfect society has been raised time and time again. While the chairman has so far been faithful, have been faithful to the party line, more and more factions with different answers on how to reach our perfect goal continue to rise. The newest one of these factions is greatly inspired by the theory of popular redism, which has been pioneered by the Socialist Party of America's Earl Browder. While remaining mostly loyal to orthodox beardist teaching, popular redism seeks to unite the entire left on a single front, both to increase the party's own popularity, but also to end any infighting within the left and to uh, hyper-focus the entirety of the proletariat against its oppressors. Due to this and due to our own ties with the, with the SPA, the faction has reached quite the popularity. Due to its large support base, if the chairman should wish, we could easily co-opt the movement and make popular redism our own, or we could simply purge the lot as we have the rest of those who go against the party. So we have purged the faction where they get any ideas, or we have embraced the faction. Ireland shall march towards redism together. Sounds good to me. We are now popular redism. New sub-ideology. Popular Redism, Popular Redism, nicknamed Apple Pie Redism, or just Browderism by its loyal adherents in the Americas, is a form of centralized, semi-authoritarian public controlism that features a strong executive while also working to build a united left front in order to foster pan-leftist unity and cooperation. A mix of, of, of authoritarianism and pure socialist democracy, Popular Redism seeks to safeguard the revolution with, uh, without resorting to infighting, excess of violence, brutal repressions and reprisals, and other inhumane practices supported by craft unions and guilds, but against communization and anarchist influences uh, and anarchist-influenced Cooperatives, popular realism centralizes the economy and the state in sound hands while still allowing self-management and autonomous freedom so the working class and usually seeks to find a balance between agrarian and industrial pursuits. This is quite nice, I like this. Especially considering when you look at the popularity that the other leftist factions have here, the Irish Worker League, Sayer Air, Labour, I mean, together they form a majority, so I think it'd be best not to uh, piss them off. And plus, it is it is uh, quite nice to have a nice broad coalition, but I know that, I know that coalition is in fact a, a mechanic in Hearts of Iron 4, at least in Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiser, I've seen it in other mods, uh, to be sure. But it's a shame that we don't actually enter into an alliance here, combining all of these uh, popularities, because that would really help with our daily political power gain. Shame. Now, what to do with this? Army focus is fine for now, so we should focus on basically everything else. I think straight up to early mob. Yeah. Now, oppress the Unionists. 25 political power weakens the Unionists in the event of a civil conflict. The Ulster Unionists have caused nothing but trouble to the Irish people. They are Irish in name only and have shown themselves time and time again to be enemies of the Republic. It's time to start cracking down upon the Unionists, preventing them from organising any future marches or rallies. That's good. We're doing well with uh, all of these. We want to get those researched so we can start producing our fantastic new tanks. Or start building them, rather. Radical movements mobilising in response to what they see as oppressive policies. Towards the people of Ulster, Unionist organisations are growing more radical and attracting the most disenfranchised and angry Northerners to their cause. They are pre uh, presently meeting in secret in pubs and orange order halls around the country, safe in the prying eyes of the Gardaí. Bloody radicals. Go straight up to partial mob. Full 15 military fa uh, civilian factories. Fantastic. And we can just keep going with this. Actually, maybe just build one more in Ulad and then just focus on the rest, because we will temporarily be losing control of this region. Now, reinforce the Ulster Gardaí, raise five divisions of Gardaí in Belfast, weakens the Unionists in the event of a civil conflict. As tensions in the region continue to rise, it is obvious that a larger police force, the Gardaí, is needed in Ulster. We should support the Belfast Constabulary by expanding the local police force considerably to better cover the entire region. Now, that's fantastic. We will get more trucks. We desperately need them. Also, I am uh, resolving to only enter the war in Europe once we are good and ready. I'm kind of aiming for a Japan date, 19, December 1941, something like that. I know, I know that's when Japan entered against America, but um, you know, obviously Japan was actually involved uh, in war in general since 1937 against the Chinese, but yeah, I'm not gonna enter any war until I am good and ready. They can wait. 
Because literally, like, like, what we have here is just, uh, like, six twos. Like, 140,000 men. That's, like, that's not going to do anything whatsoever. Now, oh, there we are. There's, there is the event. The French joined immediately. Have the British joined immediately? No, they have not. Okay. So, who... Russian Mountain War, not that war. Russian French War. Who else has joined? Just okay. Just the. That's fine. So we will therefore immediately force you to peace out. There should now be no war. Fantastic. Maybe it's kind of a Denmark scenario where the where the Russians declared war and the Finns were immediately like, oh, okay, no, no, we'll we'll give you the land because the uh, international isn't going to support us. Because I mean, like, like. The international isn't. Don't, don't don't get me wrong. They actually performed really well. They landed in um, in Ravel in well, they didn't land in Riga, but they landed around Riga. And they landed in Labava, and they actually basically took all of the Baltics and were even threatening Saint Petersburg. The Russians kind of got themselves into a winter war situation. The Finns were taking Kola, Karelia, uh, von Ungern, Sternberg declared the Second Mongol Empire. He 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 declared the Great One. He was actually fucking huge. It was insane, but it was uh, not too. Not in our best interests, so we are not going to let that happen. So now we're going to hand those over. Just we have the Russian Empire here, the RNSMA, the Legion of Archangel, well, not, not the Legion of Archangel Michael, but the Black Hundredists, Purskevich, those fellas. They are uh, Legionnaires, though. Now, yes, we will need all that army experience for... Tanks, so that's fine. We'll hang on to that. So double check this now. There shouldn't be any Russian Finnish war or anything like that. No, good. So now the Russians are doing quite well for themselves. They've got all of Central Asia. They've got their uh, Finnish territories. They've got all of the Baltics. Well, all of the Baltics except for Riga and Lithuania. And now they are busting into southern Russia. Basic medium tank chassis, thank god. Easily run over here and grab the improved radio. 104 days, that's when we will start making the tanks. Craig speaks out. After several years of inactivity and silence, the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party has spoken out regarding the status of Ulster and the Republic of Ireland. James Craig, reported by some to have grown senile in his elder years, appeared lively and in a good mood as he viciously attacked the Irish government in his first major address of such a kind since the ceasefire of 1925. Good lord, 13 years. He particularly chastised the current regime and the economic neglect paid towards Ulster during the past decade. That's not true at all. We've been really... Well, maybe the first eight years of that decade were the last two. We've really... The last two and a half, we've really been... Uh, ramping up development and the man that every son and daughter will also be prepared to fight for the prosperity and if needs be freedom of the region he should have kept his mouth shut minus 25 pistol power so we are reinforcing the guardian ulster with 32,000 men like i think that that might be more than the guardian the entire country easily could be there it's absolutely insane we're gonna immediately dissolve these units they will serve as a nice source of manpower now we need to get our divisions into ulster that's fine I'm sure this will be responded to positively. That's hilarious. Nothing in Derry because it's not a coastal state. Maybe actually just for... Uh... Yeah, there we are. That's a bit better. Whereas also here is really just uh, Northern Ireland. It's not including these states here. Now... Yes, we occupy Belfast. 25 political power weakens the Unionists in the event of a civil conflict. The Unionists have in the past raised threats about civil conflict and secession. Oh, for fuck's sake, Russia, what are you doing, man? I assume that's drug in the French immediately. No, not yet. Okay, good. Okay, in that case, I think we might have to... Uh... Why is there two Russian mountain wars? Yeah. Okay, if that's going to be the way of it, I think we're going to have to put Finland on the chopping block. I'm sorry, Finland. The Russians want it, and we are not, absolutely not, 
going to uh, risk our war with Germany it's just to fucking help the Finns feed, fight the Russians? Are you kidding me? No way. No more trucks. Improved artillery, fantastic. What else? It's 38. Resource would be nice. Didn't need to get cracky on this though, yeah. New. Uh, I think I think this is a German 150 some. I think it's a 150 millimeter gun, but uh, we'll, we'll just pretend it's a it's a 105 because going from a 84 millimeter 18 pounder to a 155 is or 150 or 155 is just a bit too much. Just pretend this is the the Germans like LEFH 18. I think that's a 105. Yeah, just pretend it's that one. Finest hour. Okay, that should be a global event rather than a national news event. Yeah, that's fine. Catholic supremacy, and do we have secular supremacy yet? Yeah, we do. That's so funny. Ottomans gaining back a slight sliver of territory there. Now destroy the Ulster Volunteer Force. 50 political power weakens the unions in the event of a civil conflict. The Ulster Volunteer Force, these so-called freedom fighters, are nothing more than a band of terrorists. We must, we must infiltrate the movement and destroy them completely. If Ulster's have any sort of lasting peace, we will hunt down the leaders and put an end to their recruitment, weakening the physical force aspect of the unionist movement considerably. So th this is this is going to be, say, the first defeat of the, uh, of the unionists in Ulster, because th there is going to come two more. Greece immediately joining the Entente. Okay. <laughs> Russians have beast out immediately with them. With no land gain because there was no land to gain apart from the rest of Finland. I'll go up to free trade. Need a bit of aluminium. Rights in Belfast. The streets of Belfast are in uproar after the Unionists have begun to make their play for a general uprising. Disgruntled, Ulst uh, disgruntled Ulstermen, the vast majority of which are Protestants, have taken to the streets in a violent stand against what they believe to be hostile intentions from Dublin. The Dáil has called an emergency meeting to address their grievances, but that may not be enough to stop the madness. Minus 25 political power. With that, we will begin to put our forces in play. Holy fuck, you just can't stop going after them, can you? This is your third war with them. Oh, not doing focus. Didn't lose any time though, that's good. Now we've that finished, that's fine, we can leave that for a while, that's grand. Look at this. Renovate Irish culture, 5% base stability, 5% total support. Add renovate Irish culture, which grants daily political power cost minus 0 0.05, did, uh, division recovery plus 1%, stability 2%, resource speed 5%, factory output plus 2%, daily total support plus 0 0.02. Bohemian Revolution, that's fantastic. What do we get there? One of Groton's key beliefs is that Irish culture is inherently conservative, traditionalist, and all round backwards, which has caused leftism and revolutionary thought to have trouble gaining traction in the past. In order to rectify this reality, Kennedy Groton has pushed for a complete overhaul of Irish culture modeled on modern American liberal leftist culture. Oh, that's terrible. And ideas as spouted by the likes of Earl Browder, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Jr., Mayor London, uh, or Meyer London. Gus Hall and other contemporaries. Okay, just take the word liberal out of it, please. With the new Irish identity and culture linked to socialism from the start, there is no way that the revolution can fail. Nice. John Rigby and company support. Uh, yes, John Rigby. Yeah, I'll get you on this first. Anti-tank rifles. Essential. The P-51 
PTRDs and the PTRSs really gave the Germans a lot of trouble, so we'll be glad to get these. Get the, uh, yeah, single assault man portable anti tank system, definitely a PAT probably. That is perfect after that, yeah. Production resource heat, minus 50%, yeah. Uh, high quality material blend, absolutely. Master I love how the, there's no in between between scrap melting and high quality material blend. There, there, there can't be anything in the middle. Mass production, I suppose you just not do it, but then you couldn't get the, get to these. Mass production and efficient scale up, yeah. Computing machine. Oh, factory, that's very good. We'll begin producing tanks very soon. Belfast City Hall bombing terror awaited Belfast as, as the Belfast City Hall was subjected to a massive bombing that left over 50 people dead and many more injured. The shocking attack appears to be the latest in a long line of escalating UVF attacks and was carried out during a meeting of local political representatives. Among those killed was Thomas uh, Caroline, local party chief for the National Centre Party. This attack has frightened the nation and the tension Ulster has once again reared its ugly head, but this time with the devastating consequences. We just, we just destroyed the UVF, but clearly not. The times we live in, minus 30 political power. I don't know if it's upgrading. Oh no, yeah, it made sense when it had the eighteen pounder. But once I uh, changed the name of it and applied the the military industrial organization, it acted like it was upgrading. Though it was the exact same thing, just just with a different name. Funny. Now we'll get recon. Russians are doing well. There we are. Throat singing intensifies. Let's get Irish social nationalism. 1500 manpower, 5% base conflict support, 50% power, 5% RADSOC and total support. Lahan gets one military factory and building slot. Nationalism is a concept that has long been tainted by deluded dreamers and radical ultranationalists, and while many weaker public controllers have been led astray by internationalist ideals, we in Ireland know that nationalism and public controllism are not contradictory concepts. We shall embrace Irish nationalism fused with our Gaelic language and traditions, supporting the will of the people to be a separate, independent, and undoubtedly superior state from our neighbours to the east. To that end, we shall aid in the preservation and expansion of Gaelic culture, restoring and fostering the Irish language, culture, and games. Beautiful. That's what I like to hear. Oh, have we gotten that? Yes, we have gotten the... Um, the better radio. Fantastic. Now, this is going to be... I can't, so why can't I assign the uh, military industrial organization here? I'm usually able to do that. Max engine. Max armor. I'm going to call this... It's going to be produced by uh, Great Southern Railways. So, it'll be the GSR. We will name it after our... Chief of Army, who is um, a, the a proponent of the Armoured Spearhead Doctrine, Liam Archer. So we're going to call it the LA-1, and this is the first iteration of it, so it'll be the Mark 1, the GSR LA-1 MK-1. Very nice. Now, yeah, mostly German tanks to choose from. Uh, there's a tank to start with. I think that's the, the Hetzer. Or this. Is that a priest? Maybe it's a German vehicle that looks similar. No, I don't know. Maybe it's a priest. I think we'll go for something like this. It doesn't look too bad. We can't use a Panzer IV with the, the long barrel 75. I think this this will be what we'll use. Looks fairly, fairly medium. -y. It's clearly got some sort of 40mm uh, gun, maybe a, a 37. But in my head cannon, in my schizophrenic head cannon, it is, it is in fact using a 50mm or something like that. Something just a bit beefier. Uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe a medium barrel 47 millimeter gun. I think I think the French might have a couple of those. I know the Italians did. We'll use a uh, not a two man turret. We'll use a three man turret. We will use the medium cannon. An improved radio. Heavy machine gun, very important. Likely a French uh, heavy machine gun, probably maybe 13.2 millimeter or something like that. Hopefully mounted coaxially. Uh, and maybe then a general purpose machine gun on the roof and a general purpose machine gun in the hull. Though I would like there one, for there to be one in the hull just because it creates a, a weak point for the armor. But 
a lot of most tanks had machine guns in the hull at, at the time. Now, special modules, we will get additional machine guns, set of machine guns and sponsoons, and special pintle mounts give the vehicle improved defense against close and infantry attack. Essential armor skirts, absolutely. Protection against anti tank rifles and shaped charges. Definitely anti tank rifles, probably not shaped charges. Expanded fuel tanks, absolutely. Extra ammunition storage, sloped armor, smoke launchers, and wet ammunition storage. 52.2% reliability, not great at all. It's uh, We are really going to need those uh, maintenance company. Six kilometers an hour, not bad speed. Uh, of course, this, this is quite heavy for a medium, fully armored, fully engined, and uh, we actually haven't finished yet. Diesel engine, cast armor, and torsion bars. Yeah, it's dropped down to 4.7 kilometers and 75% reliability. That's much, much better. Oh, I think that's what, what I'm going to rock with. I could go for a uh, gasoline engine for extra speed. But that would drop down our liability by 15%. Yeah, I think I'm a-okay with this one. Petrol electric then is just... The reliability is just atrocious. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I could ever use petrol electric because of the um, reliability. Unless I just have a kind of colossal industry. Yeah, maybe if I had like, something like America's industry. Where I can just afford to have tanks fucking crap out of it at, uh, every kilometre. Just because I have so damn many of them. But they're really good. Medium tank, yep, that's what we will use. Medium cannon, three-man turret, improved radio heavy machine gun, all of... I'm, I'm not going to duplicate the special modules the way you actually can, especially with uh, machine guns, fuel tanks, uh, smoke launchers, and extra ammunition. Now, cast armor, the best kind of armor there is. I think, actually, yeah, it's like... It, yeah, for some reason, they give better defense and breakthrough to welded armor. I really have no idea why. It really shouldn't. 65 armor, 65 armor experience, a hefty chunk. We will take that. Thank you. Uh, here we have it, our very first medium tank. Great Southern Railways. Now I think I might close these up a bit. Slash literally everything, I think. Just to make room for these tanks. Gonna be a lot of resources needed. A lot. Who can we buy from, realistically? Swedish Commune, perfect. Producing three of these a week, and there's a lot of production efficiency cap yet to go. <coughs> Professional Army Corps. I'm going to immediately get Mobile Warfare Doctrine just so that we can, so just so I can see what we can get here in Spirit of the Division Command and Spirit of the Academy. Uh, that's all fine. Mobile Warfare, yes. Breakthrough 20%, Division Speed 10%, Org Loss with Moving minus 10%, Planning Speed plus 50%. Damn. Lovely, give me that. I do have a Doctrine buff in my tree, but it is. Uh, yeah, it's only the one, it's only a 50% cost reduction, so we'll get that later on for one of the other doctrines. So yeah, now we have Maneuver Warfare, 5% Division Speed, 5% Coordination, 100% uh, Additional Unexpected Thrust Tactic Chance if it is Preferred Tactics. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely go for that. Then we have Embrace the Future, Panzer Leader, Trade XP Gain plus 20%. It's not great, to be honest. To be fair, none of these are the, the best. Uh, Oh, that's a movie. Yeah, that's that's quite nice. But we'll go, we'll go for that because that is what we are doing. There we are. The Finns are gone. The, the Russians will probably annex them because they can. With oh no, they let them go. Grand Duchy, Tsar of all Russia. Yeah, I suppose they are technically uh, de jure part of the Russian Empire. Personal union. More on the desert. Now, lessons of Gralton's exile. Camaraderie. Gralton faced unjust exile in 1933. Funnily enough, he's one of the only Irish people to ever be deported. Um, though that, that was later revoked uh, posthumously. At the hands of the Collins' illegitimate German satellite regime. Spending the next four years away from his homeland in New York. While in New York, Gralton spent, spent his time educating America's Irish diaspora on James Connolly. And running for representative of the 13th District of Manhattan under the banner of the SPA. 
and while Gralton now rests safely in the Emerald Isle, his time spent in the United States has greatly affected him. Gralton's first day in the United States saw him working as a taxi driver and bartender. It was in America where he first became immersed in American culture, eventually coming to the belief that, uh, that the only way Ireland would ever accept socialism would be if Ireland's inherently conservative. Uh, culture was completely replaced with an American model now that Gralton is in power. He has the power to put his radical plan into action. And while there has been significant resistance to Gralton's Irish social revolution, even with the traditionally revolutionary IRA, there is no doubt that with the Keanacy in charge, Ireland will never be the same again. Air son Gralton era, August on Socialicus. For Gralton, Ireland, and socialism, I think is what it said. Def definitely Gralton and uh, socialism. I'm not sure what the, I, think, I think it said era. Now, Dublin bombing. Ooh, yeah, here we go. At 10.30 a.m. this morning, a massive explosion went off near the four courts in Dublin. 500 people are believed dead and many more could follow when an official death count is taken. Two men believed to have been responsible for the bombing were shot dead by the Gardaí as they attempted to flee the scene and put up resistance when asked to stand down. At least one of the men has been identified as a Belfast native with known, uh, with known unionist ties. This terrifying escalation and the ongoing conflict in Ulster is tantamount to a declaration of war upon Ireland and her people. And the public outcry has been enormous. The Irish people are baying for blood and it is Ulster that may have to pay the price. May... Who else? This can't go on. Minus 30 plus the power. Civil war imminent. All measures peaceful or otherwise to try and pacify Ulster has failed. The Ulster Unionists, backed by the Ulster Volunteer Force, have announced their independence from Ireland. And it will clear that they will defend the province of Ulster to the death from Dublin and Catholic rule. A civil war is inevitable. God help us. Minus 50 political power. Russia now. I'm not stopping the, uh, the war train. Immediately going after the Great Mongol Empire. Very small frontier. They likely can't break through. Yeah, pump it all into tanks. Now, create the CPAI, 5% base ability, add uh, the Kumashun on Fubble on Gnohi if, um, in Vonica. I suppose that's it, that should be on Kumashun, which grants ability 5%, resistance growth speed minus 10%, damage to garrisons minus 20%. I mean, we won't be using, we won't even basically be interacting with the resistance or uh, garrison mechanics. Daily total support plus. 0 0.04 uh, to change the popularity of syndicalism, radical public controlism, social democracy, social liberalism, market liberalism, social conservatism, authoritarian democracy, paternal autocracy, national populism minus 5% each. While Comrade Gralton has worked hard to transform Ireland into a proletarian paradise, many within Ireland still cling to the past and are determined to resist Gralton's new order at any cost to alleviate the pressure caused by these traitors. The Kansi has authorized the creation of on Kumashun on Fubal on Gnohi in Vonica, an agency with powers exceeding the power of the regular legal system. Death of W.B. Yeats. The famous poet and one of the founders of Dublin's Abbey Theatre, William Butler Yeats, has died today. He was a driving force behind the Irish literary revival, and in 1923 he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature. He also served as a politician for two terms after the Irish War of Independence, but retired in 1928 due to poor health. Oh, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. I, I fucking, I do not like Yeats, I'll be honest. Ireland mourns a great poet. Minus 10 political power, minus 2% base stability. Oh, pra. They lost. Still a 50% support, though. Clearly, uh, Venice just conquered the ANI. Jimmy's Hall rebuilt. Yeah. Sad. Before rising to Ireland's highest position of power, Kennedy Gralton operated a relatively small Pierce Connolly Memorial Hall in uh, Efr Efrenag. Never heard of Efrenag. Efrena. Efrena. Yeah, there we are. It's better. Uh, where he worked to spread his public controlist ideals through various free events. The hall was also used as a makeshift doll court, which was often used around Ireland to counter the British legal system, often to settle matters such as land disputes. Tragically, the hall was burnt down in 1932, and as Gralton was deported not a year later, he never had a chance to rebuild. However, with Gralton's exile ending uh, once Ireland embraced the red glow of public controlism, he was given a golden opportunity to rebuild his beloved hall, and while he has previously been wrapped to, uh, been too wrapped up in executive matters to attend to its reconstruction, today the Kansi has ordered a building crew into uh, uh, Efrena, 
where they would rebuild the hall just as it stood. While the, whilst the hall's reconstruction was met with jubilation from, from Republicans, farmers, and trade unionists, several priests from the area decried the hall as a den of prostitution and syndicalism and rallied several local citizens in a protest against it, quickly leading to violent incidents. Following these protests, Grothen ordered the local Red Guard to capture all who were part of these incidents and, find, and to find the local priests responsible for the agitation and swiftly imprison them. Third time is the charm at 10 political power minus 20 manpower. Now, be taking more of these poor companies. Desperately need them. It all considers the economy. The Revolutionary Workers Group have a point. 50%. Fantastic. We have our majority. Almost. Our campaign against the church. We've already clearly started that based on the last event. Minus 50, political power, 5% total support, add campaign against the church, which grants recruited population 1.5%. Consumer goods factories factor minus 15%. Oh, excuse me. 2% stability, 5% division attack on core territory. I don't see what that has to do with anything. So that basically that makes it sound like we're attacking our own people. Research, which we will, which we are. Resource speed 5%, daily total support plus 0 0.02. Unlike most parties in Ireland, our RWP is vehemently against the Catholic Church. Though we are not an atheistic party outright, due to, uh, despite the beliefs of some of our members, we do preach secularism and we woefully despise the power of the Church and the Pope in Rome has over our island. Uh, no longer shall we let a foreign body meddle in the affairs of this Red Republic, and no longer shall we let them infect the minds and souls of the masses with conservative nonsense. If Christianity is to survive in Ireland, it must adapt and modernize along with us, lest it fall before the sword of the revolution. I imagine we, we would probably adopt some sort of, uh, just this you can pray within the, within your own homes kind of a thing. Something like that, maybe. Maybe something a bit more lenient that if we fucking knock down every church, we would be hated. That's just making unnecessary enemies. And after all, we are popular redism, not fucking, you know, Soviet redism. Now, uh, yeah, more tanks. Judging by this, we'll be up to about two a day, hopefully. Great Southern, fantastic. On to armor enemy tank refitting. I won't be doing much of that. Efficient scrap recycling. Ooh, minus 6% hardest, but minus 20% production resource needed well, is quite nice, especially as we get more factories on high volume smelter, production output, max speed 10%, high powered engine production, heavy duty machine tools, multi plant cooperation, yes. Then uh, armor technology is fine, yep. Armor technology support equipment, armor technology, yeah. Dual plant main armament production. Minus 5% reliability, okay, well, yeah, we'll take it. Long distance train escort armor and an air attack, fantastic. And barrels of hell. Railway artillery, okay, we won't be getting that, but we'll get it anyway. Or rather, we won't be getting those, but we'll get it anyway. I have the force of the Czechs in the of the exhausted Austrians admit defeat. That's. Oh, oh, bright. You got all of Czechoslovakia? You it's just Czechia? Oh, bright. This, this is a total fucking collapse. Here we have it. The Unionists declare independence. After months of mounting tensions, the inevitable has happened. The Ulster Unionists have risen in mass numbers, led by the Protestant demagogue James Craig, demanding separation from the Republic of Ireland. They've stated that they will defend their newly proclaimed freedom to the death, no matter how much blood might have to be spilled in the process. Barricades have been erected in Belfast, and many Protestant militia have flocked to the cause of the Unionists. Civil war is upon Ireland, and this time there will be no ceasefire, as there once was in 1925. The fate of Ulster will forever be decided one way or the other. Funnily, funnily enough, it, it's uh, Basil Brook that leads Ulster, though, not uh, James Craig. He used to be James Craig once upon a time. Not too sure. Obviously, we've, ta we've taken every focus we can to, to weaken the Unionists. But still, they have a, a large force. But it's, uh, as you can see, it's their org is extremely low. And I, I don't know why it's so low. Because, oh no, it's fine over here. Okay. No idea. Maybe maybe, he, maybe they strategically redeployed. Now, we are already in position. But let's just get our planning up. Transover plunges into chaos. That is not good. I think I might... I think some funny shit is going to start happening here. I'll wait till you beat the Great Mongol Empire. That makes more sense. If you beat the Great Mongol Empire. 
about now. It'll be almost uh, two weeks worth of waiting. Yeah, you're training up your units. That's such a bad fucking idea. It's, it's insane. Actually, fully motorize these uh, these men right here. Their squads, that is. Now, a new red IRA. 5% base conflict support. 20 army experience. Add a new red IRA, which grants... Which grants a five percent army experience gain. I'm uh, oh, sorry, plus point zero five army experience gain daily. Five percent division org. Two percent recruitable pop. Org loss removing minus two percent division recovery plus five percent army organization regain plus two percent production efficiency growth. Two percent. Two percent production efficiency base. Five percent attack. Five percent defense. Two percent planning speed. Two percent max planning. Minus two percent minimum training level. Division limit plus two. Change in popularity of totalism. Five percent. God, that's a lot of buffs. The IRA, though once uh, though a once proud group of freedom fighters, has fallen to Catholic nationalism, capitalist decadence, and stagnating conservatism, creating a cesspit of reactionary thought and petty bourgeois. Petty bourgeois what? Okay. Unlike our allies on the left, however, we know the truth is that the IRA is truly far too gone to be saved. Instead of trying to salvage a failed system, we shall create a new form of the IRA, dubbed the Irish Citizens Army, after the various leftist militias that helped fight for our independence. This newly reforged ICA shall defend our island and the revolution as Kianese Grotten continues to bring about a true beardist paradise. Yeah, real, real beardist paradise. Now, what else we got? Free trade and limited conscription. I mean, it's probably time to start working on. The, yeah, it's the same, same that we're not going to be building aircraft in this one. But it's considering the. Uh, we do actually get three. See, so yeah, Air owns Northern Ireland, even though it's called. Yeah, now it's called Northern Ireland. 1.32 million people. It's our uh, second largest province. We need that back. It's damn near as big as uh, Leinster itself in terms of population. Ministry, too, probably not too far behind. Yeah, only four behind. Now, what was I about to spend that on? Navy? We don't really need it. I'll be entirely honest with you. Well, we'll get it eventually, don't get me wrong. But other than that, I think we might... Uh, Ernie O'Mal... Uh, Rory O'Connor or Nora Connolly? They offer the exact same buffs. Um, Nora's in a uniform, so I guess we'll get Nora. I don't like it when military figures are out of uniform. Now, Nora Connolly, 10% division speed, 10% armor division attack and defense, truck and mechanized max speed plus 10% each. Okay. But no 10% no max speed for the tanks, even though it's a uh, armor division attack and defense, and not motorized or mechanized division attack and defense. That's odd. Uh, I mean, do I really need this now? I don't think so. I'm going to grab extensive conscription or I start getting the... Actually, no, I'm going to start getting the Air Force stuff, just because uh, I need that new doctrine that we have. Air Force reform air experience gain plus 0.12 daily. Lovely. All in. Now we're almost completely battle planned up. Are we at? We're completely battle planned up. They are enemies of the state. We will destroy them. Minus 100 political power. Air declares war on Ulster. And they are all training up. God help them. This is not going to go well for them at all. Attention. I could just green button this. I won't lie, but I would like to take it a little bit slower. And now we're in that. Oh, actually, can you, uh... Can you take that? Okay, nice. Oh, on the 1916 Rising. Oh, that's fantastic. The invasion coincides with the anniversary. Oh, you gotta love it. And it's all over. Casualties. We lost seven men. They lost 18,000. That was the second defeat of the Unionists. There, There is one more yet to come. I think we lose one factory out of that, don't we? Yeah. Unfortunately, we do. So we will take it from... We'll drop it down. We'll drop down one from tanks just to get our trains back. Got to keep those coming. After that, go straight back to area defense. West Ukrainian People's Republic going after the Ukrainian state, really? That's just free land for the Reichspact, you sure? It's such a bad idea. 
Uh, Russia, out of interest, how many men have you lost here in this war against the uh, Mount Republic? Oh, it's not letting me open them up. Lovely. Ulster uprising crushed and arousing address to a rapturous crowd in Dublin government and army officials proclaimed that the Republic of Ireland has won a crushing and complete victory over the Unionist rebels in Ulster. Although the civil conflict was a bloody one and the victory was won through hard work and sacrifice, the government has pledged that the Ulster question will never more trouble the people of Ireland and that the Unionist cause has been rooted out rooted out and the earth salt in its wake. One of the most divisive issues in modern Irish history has, it would seem, finally been put to rest. Long live Ireland. 200 political power. Fantastic. Now Air Force Command Focus. I believe this is what the one that we want to go for. Or is this... No, it's not. Actually, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have got this one first at all. Uh... What do we get? Doesn't particularly matter again. We will not be using the carpet bomb touch. I mean, for God's sake, strategic bomber Ireland. Uh, we'll, we'll get James O'Donovan, Chief of Air Force, Air Superiority Doctrine. Point two air experience gain daily and some nice interception and agility bonuses. Or attack, defense, and agility bonuses for interception and air superiority. Lovely. Now, our allies in the CPI. A leading Irish beardist and red organiser, Elizabeth Betty Sinclair, was a member of... I think Betty Sinclair used to be the, uh... Used to be the leader of Ser Air before it was to Pat O'Donnell. Maybe, maybe she's still there, I'm not too sure. Was a member of the parallel revolutionary workers' groups that loosely cooperated in order to bring uh, about the revolution. Studying in Paris, he began to mildly mould uh, beardist and, uh... Proudunist principles, forming her own synth uh, syncretic brand of Sindo Redism that has become the foundation of her own faction of Ireland's far left. A capable leftist leader and revolutionary, Betty Sinclair and her Red Party of Ireland have agreed to fully merge into the... I'm oh, sorry, the Massacre Report. That's good. Into the larger RWP, ensuring that a large and unified united bloc of committed Reds defends our Ruby Isle. However, many within her ranks have pushed for Sinclair to not only be made a major a major cabinet member of the government, but further pushed to have her made executive of the nation. Doing so would go a long way in promoting leftist unity, not to mention women's rights, but would also slight uh, Grothman's loyalists and the work they have done to build a Red Ireland. What shall we decide? So we have avoid making any further public approval of the CPI. Bad idea. Merge the parties and have Sinclair appointed as Ireland's new red Taoiseach. So getting rid of Jim Groth and our current uh, head of government, who's a flamboyant brute, hitting our daily political power game, but giving us 5% stability and 15% base conflict support, which will be very important when it comes to, uh, to us getting to total mobilisation, which we will be doing. And instead we will get Betty Sinclair... Ambitious Union boss, resource gain, efficiency, 5% and 8% factory orbit. That 8% factory orbit is quite nice. Or we have utilized the CPI in our revolution and merged the parties, Granny Sinclair cabinet position, so we get rid of, of our Minister of the Interior, James Everett, who kind of looks like the, uh, oh god, what's his name? It, it's the current stare meme where he's like staring directly into the camera. He's, he's, he's got damn near that exact same 1,000 yard stare. Not quite as good though. God, I can't remember the, uh... let me look it up. The guy's name is on is on the, the tip of my tongue, but I just can't. Yeah, Kurt Angle staring me, and it's Kurt Angle. He kind of looks like he's kind of got the Kurt Angle thing going on. Not, yeah, like I said, though, not quite as good. So James Everett keep currently hitting our recruitment population factor by by two percent. Weekly stability plus point one percent is quite nice, though. And just entirely got minus five percent. That's that last part is completely irrelevant. I mean that that's ten weeks to get one one. Uh, 1% base stability, so we get 5% base stability over the course of a year, but I mean, we're already quite strong there. We'll be at war anyway, so we'll be hard capped. And Sinclair gives us 3% recruitment population factor. Okay, that, that's a difference of 5% right there, so that's quite nice. That's a lot of men. Minus 10% division attrition, are you kidding me? That's going to be incredibly important when we send our beefy tank divisions to the continent. Air accident chance minus 20%, that doesn't matter. And experienced soldier losses minus 10%. That is incredibly strong. I think it's much better to have her in that cabinet position. Much better. Damn, she looks a lot different in the... Uh, she looks like Shickle Gruber in this portrait. <laughs> a female Shickle Gruber. As opposed to uh, the poster, that the photo over there on the event. Now back to building up, we can build another four factories in Ulster. Fantastic, but we are running out of many has joined the Moscow car, the bulk. It's time for the Balkans to fall in line. Ow. Logistics. Signals. What 
the hell? Why, does, why don't the improved artillery have... What? Oh, shit, yeah, because I... Uh... Oh, shit, the game just crashed. Oh, well. See, ordinarily, I would be concerned about this. Because it, it, it on the old PC, it took Kaiser Redux half an hour to load. But now I have the new PC, and it loads in 60 seconds. So, I do not care. Ow. Oh. So much quicker, it's insane. New cabinet position. Yeah, that's a really strong min Minister of the Interior. Lovely. Now, yes, I have fucked this up, so... I'll just say JMS. I'll just double check that this is the LAFH uh, 18. Put the synth wave back on. Yeah, it is. First, it wouldn't make much sense to start using a German gun, even though this gun does clearly look German. Uh, because, you know, now, now we've uh, firmly firmly broken with the Germans. So I think I might look up some British artillery World War II. Uh... Yeah, the 4.5 inch gun, that looks decent. 4.5 inch, what is that? 114 millimeter, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. That's nice and uh, in the middle. Nice. So that is the BL 4.5 inch. What does a BL stand for here? Reach loading? Maybe? I'm not too sure. That's fine though. So we'll call it the JMS BL 114 millimeter. 114 millimeter medium field gun? Yeah, I think that's uh, BL 60 pounder 5 inch. huge. We have the 5.5 inch medium gun. 5,000 dollars right now. Looks very World War One. Hmm. I that doesn't mean, maybe it means breech loading as opposed to muzzle loading. I think that's what we'll call it. Perfect. I'll stop rising crushed and arousing address to a rapture. Uh, no, I already read that. Yeah, that's fine. And then immediately jump on to Chief of the Air Force, James O'Donovan. Keep going with the support equipment. Yep. Some 130 vehicles made so far. That's decent, but we need a lot more. Uh, 
That did not take long at all. It was never going to. Poland must be so sad right now. They're, they're looking like, damn, the Ukrainians got East Galicia. But can we get West Galicia, please? Please? To be fair, yeah, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't invade that right about now. They're completely cut off from the uh, Austro-Hungarians. Right, what? Did you? Oh, you, you beat the AI, and then you released the... Oh, what? That makes no sense. Now, oh, yes, Gaelic public controlism. This is why I kind of like this path. It's not nearly as extreme as it could be. It's popular redism. We get Irish social nationalism. We get Gaelic socialism. We get the revival campaign. It's quite nice. Now, at Gaelic public controlism, which grants daily political power gain, plus 0 0.05, monthly population minus 5%, recruitment population factor minus 2%, division recovery plus 5%. Stability minus 5%, conflict support plus 5%, gains promoted Gaelic opinion of Union of Britain minus 30. Uh, they, they, no, they should get a... Uh, well, I suppose maybe, maybe we should get a mutual minus 30 opinion, but it should really be them getting the minus opinion of us. We shall pursue a policy of Gaelic public controlism, reviving the near-dead Gaelic language and a wider Celtic culture, and identify it while... Uh, and, and identity while bathing it all in our own shade of red. The beliefs and customs of our ancestors shall be revitalised and modernised, fully, uh, truly making Ireland wholly Irish again, while also removing the foul taint of the Anglos. Yes, indeed. See, very nice. Polish intermarium, fantastic. See, see now, now it's only a matter of time until there's a, an immediate attack on the Dano Adri Bund. In fact, I think I might just begin it right away. Let me uh, take matters into my own hands here. This will effectively assure the finishing off of the Dano Adri Bund as well. One less enemy for us to fight, which is crazy. Before before the second Valkyrie even starts. Insane. Lyria, yeah, Lyria is so weird in this mod. It's like, it's ridiculously strong for some reason. Putting too much steel? Yeah. Build up them factories. Oh yeah, we got an up to 96 army experience. That's good. Ooh, now this right here, Air Force Command Focus again. We'll go for all-time operation, plus 0 0.06 air experience gain daily, minus 5% night operations and bad weather penalty. Lovely. Oh, that's still mobilizing. Fantastic. Support from the Union of Britain. Why, thank you very much, Britain. I think you're actually uh, guaranteeing our independence, which is very kind of you. Today, an envoy from the Union of Britain arrived. He brought with him promises of industrial assistance, naval advice, and technological support, along with kind words of admiration for our struggle. The private controllers may be strong in fighting us every turn, but with allies such as these, we will best them regardless. Truly, worker solidarity is shining out from the British Isles, and British aid, which grants 10% electronics research speed, 10% naval research speed, 10% uh, amphibious invasion speed, and minus 10% naval doctrine cost. Ulid and Connacht each get one building slot and one military factory. Fantastic. Thank you kindly. We now have 20 military factories. Industries. Booming. <laughs> we decreased our imports in the British, so they're like, oh shit, give them more military factories so they keep buying. <laughs> yeah, how, how many military factories do you have? Okay. The fact that we have 40% of your industry is just insane. I mean, it's just absolute. 40% of Britain's military industry. Oh, oh, it's outrageous, lad. Makes no sense whatsoever. Like I said, Ireland is very strong in Kaiser Redux. Now get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now this motorized division, yes, I'm extremely inter interested in this. Motorized artillery, all the way, four of them in fact. Very large regiment worth of artillery. Motorized infantry, just keep packing it in. Not fully kitted out yet, but I will take this absolutely. This will be our Renan, Renan, Armour, Armour Division. Uh, can't get any of those yet. That's fine. 
Can I get the, uh, yeah, get the tank, lovely. Crack units, no, just none. Call up as many as these as we can get, seven, that's fine. We definitely have the manpower for it, although we will uh, be kitting it out further. It's already at 16,000 men, which is a beefy division. Pitched it to Illyria? How did you manage to... Wait, are you also war with Illyria? Oh, why? That's stupid. It's very stupid. Fall of Budapest. Now, dying the IRA Red. Maximus Loyalist Frank Ryan and Sir Era veteran Mar uh, Mas Toomey have risen to become two of the new leading military officers in the IRA as the next and latest step in the national government's attempt to remove all reactionary influence from within the state military ar a paramilitary arm. Replacing O'Duffy loyalists and radicals aligned with Collins and the architects of the resurrection, Toomey and Ryan, along with a whole new generation of officers, shall now lead the IRA into a new and purely red generation, free from the reactionary and Catholic right-based nationalism that drove the old IRA to ruin. Step by step, soldier by soldier, we shall create a cohesive, public controllist militant body, ca completely capable of defending Ireland and a revolution from all sources of harm, both foreign and domestic. So we have a, if we have a quick look here. We are, we've already got Mass Toomey. That's Maurice Toomey. Um, do we not have Frank Ryan? No, we don't actually have Frank Ryan. Okay, so we are sing up there. Yes, indeed. And Owen O'Duff o O'Duffy stops being a general field marshal, maybe? Uh, is it? Yeah, Owen o o O'Duffy is actually here. That's fine. And now we have Frank Ryan. Where is he? There he is. And of course, we already had Maurice Toomey. <laughs> It'd be weird if we got him twice. Identical twin with the exact same name. Now the Ruby Isle replaced the new Red Ireland with the Ruby Isle. Effective change, daily political power gain plus 0 0.03, stability 3%, conflict support 3%, daily totalist, syndicalist, radical public controllist, and social democrat support plus 0 0.02, 100 political power 5%, uh, totalist, syndicalist, Arad Sock and Sock Dem support. Ireland is free and the people rejoice with the revolution has bathed this once emerald isle in a shade of wondrous red from the fingers of County Cork to the islands of County Donegal. Uh, did that actually say fingers or am I just getting tired? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it says fingers. From the pristine uh, forests of Clusha Valley and the placid waters of the Black Lake to the hustle and bustle of Dublin itself, all our Ireland has embraced the revolution. Our island now stands shining in crimson and the people are finally free in this paradise. A true ruby isle that sticks out like a, cl like a claret pearl, is that what that says? Claret pearl amid the dark days of the Atlantic. Aaron Gabra. See, yeah, using the proper spelling here, Gabra, it's, it's not with the CH, it's with the GH. The CH would be said Aaron Gabrak, but it's Aaron Gabra. Now we have all of the sport companies. Uh, won't be using military police, but uh, it's good to have the other ones. Yeah, Johnson need to get that. Let's come up here and get the sport weapons too. 17 army experience, lovely. Put the rest of our motorized infantry in here. That's four motorized artillery battalions that is 12 motorized infantry battalions and four medium tank battalions 200 tanks 18,400 men very big division and we haven't even added in the support companies yet it's gonna be well over 20,000 i'd say here comes the war i love the super vent so fucking ominous i'm gonna pause the music actually Great event. The Entente one is good, so is the uh, Fourth Balkan War, War of the Desert. They're all very good. Swedish coming up, oh, <laughs> collapsing. Was all the was all the chromium down there? No, they're just failing to export it. Who else? Transamara back on their feet. Ah, on the puppet. No provisional republic of uh, Yakutia can get. What's his face? Where is he? It's uh, in the Kenti Smolin, I believe. 
There's the Akatir, right? There's the Boreat Mongolia. Transbike Al Cossacks. Did they cut the uh, Inakanti Smallton path? Milton God is such a bad fucking path, it's insane. Huh. Is that the Provisional Republic of Siberia? Yeah, they don't even have a tree. Is it the Transamar? I don't think it was the Transamar path. Yeah, it can't be the Transamar path because. Uh, You have to have the collapse happen to, for it to pop up. I was sworn it was the Akatia. Oh, Lichtenstein got Alaska. Oh, oh. Alright, who else then that we can realistically trade with? from the Russian Empire, I don't care. Unless Cuba maybe is, uh... Cuba's red. Nope, they're not pop. Party of Communists. Yes. Got a force of peace between the Poles and the Illyrians. Makes no sense for them to be fighting each other while the, while the Austrians still live. Don't know, probably about the fuck with the Reich's back. I think that's the uh, that's the cue for Russia to intervene. Oh, sweet mother of God, you're losing to the Mongols? Oh, Russia. Come on. Now, oh, there we have it, though. The Ruby Alpha Knight. Can I, ch I should be able to check the wars again, yeah. Where is 215? Ah, oh, Russia. You're bungling it already. We've already lost a very large amount of territory, sweet mother of god, man. Am I going to have to rely on, on uh, Ungern Sternberg to be the Eastern Front for the Germans? God, I hope not. But now, we have finished the Ruby Isle Focus. We are Totalist, Popular Red, so it's time to actually change our colour. We can pick a colour group, we can go for greys, we got all sorts of greys there, we can go for reds. Blues, greens, yellows. We even have uh, special colors here from uh, Unified Unified Empire. That's the uh, Imperial Federation, Austro-Hungary, Austria-Hungary, uh, Unified Scandinavia. All the basically formables in the in the base game. I'm gonna pop a save before I do this, just in case things start getting a bit messy. Now, so if I actually wanted to to uh, go for the Unified Empire, changes the Irish Socialist Republic and gives us a nice shade of red. Clearly distinguishable from the British and the French, and, and, and the French, but not so much the French. What about a different red? We'll just go for a regular red. Ah, uh, it's very garish. It's not all that different from the British either. We have also changed name to Irish Socialist Republic. I think I'll change that in the title as well. Maybe. Not too sure. Swiss red. Obviously, it's for the Swiss. So even yeah, the Swiss are are they a bit darker? Yeah, it looks like they are. English red. Of course, this is a base game. Um. Britain and not, you know, a union of Britain, Britain. We have Soviet red. That definitely does distinguish us from the two. Turning more towards the Italians, actually. Uh, SPQR red. Again, that does definitely distinguish us from all of them. We have the PRC red. Raj red. Canada red. Albanian purple. New Zealand purple and Byzantine purple. I think I like the SPQR red the most. It uh, kind of distinguishes us nicely. I think I'll go with that. You know what you should do? You should attack the Austrians. Yeah, there we are. Probably the, uh, like the faction still exists. Yeah, that's not happening. Oh no, they've only pieced out with some of them. That's odd. Ah, 
Fine, Federation still going? Yeah. Republic of Barcelona, that's bad for us. Oh yeah, Spanish Republic is just in the war. In the Reichsbank, oh shit. Now, what else? 1939, yeah. Construction 2. There we go. Russian intervenes in the Valkyrie. Not sure if that's a great idea. You can't even beat von Ungern Starburg and he's pushing east. Or west, rather, sorry. Like, what you need to be doing is pushing east. Four hundred and fifty five days. Yeah. Put more into tanks. There we are. Four steel per factory, damn. These are some expensive tanks. Fifty two steel, thirteen chrome, and thirteen tungsten per uh, per factory. Oh, not per factory, sorry. Um, altogether. For the thirteen military factories. Oh, that's our political tree completely finished, and our sort of our sort of our economic tree. There's also a lot more, lots of uh, many more economic decisions to do here. So I'll come up here and we'll do steel cities to get steel. Yes. But I think that is a good place to leave the episode. We have finished off our political tree, and we have our tanks in production. Our men being called up, we'll uh, I'll get out the rest of the division next episode. But let's hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below. I shall see you in the comment section of this video, and I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.